Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Family RV. Today we're going to be doing a basic walkthrough on how to set up and operate a 2023 Thor Motor Coach 27R. So let's get started. So one of the first things we're going to do on setting up your coach when you get to your campsite is we're going to plug in your power cord, which is called a shore cord. The plug-in for your shore cord is going to be located on the driver's side right by the rear tire. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lift this up. We're going to go ahead snap that in there. We're going to go ahead and tighten this guy right here. Then you'll be able to plug in at your campsite. This is a 30 amp coach, which means this is the plug-in that you will need at your campsite. If you are plugging in to a house, you may also use an adapter that goes from 30 to 15 to plug into a regular household. This is one of the first steps that you should do when you get to your campsite. Next, we're going to be hooking up our water hose. Let's get to that next step. So the next step that you want to do after hooking up your shore power at your campground is you're going to want to hook up your water hose. This is going to be your water supply. It is called a city water connection and that city water connection is located on the driver's side to the rear of the coach. It's going to be labeled city water connection. You're simply going to take this little tab off, take this end of the water hose, screw it on here nice and tight, the other end of the water hose will have what's called a water pressure regulator. This regulator regulates the pressure of the water that's going into the coach. Too much pressure can damage the inside of the coach. You're going to want to hook up this water pressure regulator up to your water spigot at your campground. Screw it on nice and tight. Turn your water faucet on. Now before you do that, you want to make sure that all your sinks and all the water supply inside the coach are turned off. Now, if you're not hooked up to city water, you're going to be able to fill up what's called your fresh water tank. That is your onboard water supply if you do not have access to a water faucet. That fresh water tank is going to be able to be filled right here, right next to the city water connection. To fill up this water tank, you're going to simply take a hose, turn the water on, and it's going to fill up the tank. Now once the tank is filled up, it'll start overflowing right here a little bit. After it overfills, you can go ahead and put the cap back on. Now to pump the water out of this water supply, you will need to turn on your water pump switch that's located in the control panel inside, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Now to clarify what the city water connection and the fresh water, both water supplies do, city water connection is when you're stationary, probably at a campground, Fresh water tank is for when you're on the road and you need water and don't have access to a water connection. Now the next step we're going to talk about is your dumping hose and your black and your gray tanks. The black tank is for the toilet waste and the gray water tank is for the waste for the shower and for the sink. Now some campgrounds have full hookups which is electrical sewer and water which means you'll have a sewer hole at your campground to put your hose in. Now let's come down here and we're going to check, take a look and see how to hook this up. Here is your black and here is your gray. But also on the other side near the passenger rear, you're going to notice another black valve. This black valve is an early cutoff for the black tank. You'll notice if I close this valve right here, the waste will stop right here. If I open this up, the waste will continue down the pipe to the next valve, which is closed so nothing will come out. Never ever should you have both valves open at the same time before you pull open your cap. This valve should be closed and that valve should be closed. When you're going to dump, you're going to pull this valve and then you will pull that valve. Let's so the exit for the black and the gray tanks is going to be located on the driver's side all the way to the rear. And this is what it looks like underneath here. We're going to simply remove this cap. We're going to take our sewer hose this end, and you're going to notice some little lock-in tabs right here. We're going to go ahead and hook this up, and we're going to twist. Now make sure this is on nice and tight. It's on correctly. Next, we're going to take this other end, which is going to have a clear elbow on it. We're going to look for the dump station or the campground hole which the hose enters. You're going to simply put it in there. Now once you are all hooked up right here, you're ready to dump. We're going to go ahead and come to the passenger side and we're going to pull 
the black valve like this. Then we're going to come over here to the second black valve. And we're going to pull this. And this is going to release all the waste coming out of the black tank. Now, once this is all out, you can go ahead and pull your gray valve over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to help rinse out this sewer hose from all the black waste. Now, when you dump the black, your sensors inside on the control panel, which we're going to take a look at in a little bit, the sensors could always read one-third or two-thirds still full, even though you dumped it. There's sensors inside the tank which debris gets stuck on and it acts as if it is still full or one-third or two-thirds full. That's where the Santee flush comes in. The Santee flush looks almost like the city water. Do not get them confused. This is labeled Santee flush. The purpose of the Santee flush is to hook up a hose into here with both black valves open. You hook up the hose, you turn the faucet on, and then it rinses out the inside of the black tank. Now once you can verify that water is coming out of the clear elbow. You can actually close the black valve over here on the passenger side for a little bit. You're going to close that. And what that's going to do is it's going to start filling up your black tank. Do not get distracted. Always remember that you have that water on. Now you're going to take a look at your sensor on the control panel. You can press the button and it'll tell you how full the tank is getting. Now, once it gets to two thirds, you can run back out here and pull the black valve again and everything is gonna get rinsed out even more. Now, once you are done dumping your black and your gray tanks, go ahead and close the black, close the gray, and you can go ahead and close the other black. One thing you gotta remember is if you are hooked up to full hookups, you never want to leave the black valves open. These are gravity fed tanks. Even though you have a hose connected, we still want the black valves closed. They're gonna fill up and pressure needs to be pushed down. If you leave them open, all the waste is gonna trickle down slow and make a bigger mess. Remember to always use some type of glove when you're dumping your black and gray valves. Now, after you hooked up your electrical sewer and water hose at your campground, the next step is to go inside and put down the stabilizing jacks that the 27R has in the rear. Now these are only stabilizing jacks, they are not levelers, so we have to be careful on how much you extend them. We're gonna go through all that, but first I wanna show you where those two stabilizing jacks are located. There's one stabilizing jack located on the driver's side in the rear. The second stabilizing jack is located on the passenger side in the rear. Now let's go inside the coach and go push the buttons down for the stabilizing jacks. So now we're gonna put down the stabilizing jacks for the 27R. Those two buttons are located near the entry door just to the left as you walk in. Let's take a look. One says passenger side, one says driver side. Now to put these two jacks down, we're gonna push these two buttons at the same time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to listen to the sound of the jacks going down. Now once we hear that the jacks have set foot on the ground, we're gonna stop and we're gonna do them individually till we hear the winding sound. Now, once the stabilizing jacks hit the ground like that, we're gonna stop. We're gonna do them individually. We're gonna do the passenger side first, and then we'll do the driver's side. So that's about as far as we wanna go down. Now we're gonna hit the button individually for the driver's side. And that's about as far as it can go down. So let's take a look at what they should look like. After we put down the stabilizing jacks, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open up the slide. Now, when we do open up the slide, you may notice that the passenger side stabilizing jack may lift off, off the ground from the weight of the slide. If that does happen, you're simply gonna go back to the stabilizing button that's labeled passenger side, and you're gonna put it down until it hits the ground nice and snug. Now that we put the stabilizing jacks down, we can fully open up the slide. And to open up the slide from the control panel, the vehicle first needs to be turned on with the parking brake down. Now you're gonna hear a continuous beeping noise once we turn the vehicle on. That continuous beeping noise is telling you that the stabilizing jacks are still down and do not move. So let's start the vehicle, put the parking brake down, and push the slide out. Vehicle's turned on. The parking brake is located 
on your left side at the bottom it is a pedal that pushes down and while we're here the brake release is going to be right there so when we're breaking down we'll go over that a little bit later now we're going to push the parking brake down the vehicle is turned on one other thing we're going to want to do before we push the slide out is we're going to want to make sure that this driver's seat is not touching the slide out this can damage the seat so what we're going to do is we're going to just going to go ahead and push this seat forward so that the slide is clear from hitting it now let's go push out the slide on the control panel this ex slide extend button is located at the control panel by the entry door make sure that nobody is sitting on the slide while we're pushing it out we're going to simply hold down the slide extend button and we're going to hold it until the wall stops by itself All right, now that the wall is fully extended, we're gonna go ahead and turn the vehicle off and take the keys out of the ignition and set them right there. The electrical, sewer, and water was the first steps to hook up. The next was the stabilizing jacks. The af one after that is the slide out. Now everything is complete. Now we're gonna be going over some functions starting from the front, not the cab just yet. We're gonna go over the bedding, some TV, some vents, and other things. So let's get started with the front cab. The front cab is gonna have a bed. This bed mattress is gonna actually get flipped this way, and it's gonna have a safety net right here. So this is the top bunk for the kids or whoever. It could fit two people comfortably. Go simply down right there, and you can buckle this in if, if the coach is equipped with these buckles and to just like that now there's going to be a ladder that goes right there so let's grab the ladder so your over cab bed does have a ladder and this is what the ladder looks like you're going to simply clip this off we're going to turn it around and you're going to hold it like this it's a telescopic ladder which is just going to go down just like that and then we're going to place the ladder in the secured hooks right here like so now when you're breaking down the ladder, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold these little tabs right here with your thumbs. You're going to simply gently push it down, push it down, and push it down to collapse the ladder. And then you're going to store it in the proper place, which is going to be in the rear closet. All right, to give you more privacy for your windshield, you're going to have a curtain that's going to cover it. It's going to have one strip of Velcro on it, which is going to be right here. And there's going to be some Velcro strips located right here another velcro strip under here under the visor a couple more all the way around and how that's going to work is we're going to grab the corner of the velcro we're going to wrap the curtain around like this we're going to simply tack it to the velcro right there and all the other velcro pieces that are under here by the windshield which is going to give you more privacy at night when you are sleeping just like that now above the overcap bunk you're going to have a fan which is also a vent what you're going to simply do is pull this little tab down and you're going to be able to twist the vent open there's also an on and off button right here with four different speeds on how fast the fan can go now remember to always close your vents during transport as it can catch wind and can damage them your overcap bunk will also have a window, which the blinds simply come down nice and easy like this and push up nice and easy like this. Now, when somebody's sleeping up here, be sure that your pillows don't hit this blind as it can damage the blinds. To open up your window, there is a little clip right here that will allow you to lock it and unlock it and then slide the window open. Also above the bed, you have two lights, one right here and one over there. You're simply gonna push the middle of the light right there to turn the light on. Another feature that the overcap bunk has is some curtains for more privacy. For whoever's sleeping up there, you have a curtain that you can simply slide this way 
another curtain on this side that you can slide this way. All right, next we're gonna talk about the jackknife sofa bed. To simply pull this out into a bed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift the bottom and there is your bed. Next to this dine, uh, couch bed, you also have a window right here and a window right here. Same concept, to unlock the window, you simply put the propeller right here and you can slide the window open or the screen also open. Each window still has those blinds that you can gently put down. This is an emergency exit also. So that would be your emergency exit. Over here next to the couch bed, you have some outlets with some USB ports. To release it to go down, you simply push this little red button right there and the plugs can get hidden. You also have some cup holders right there. To put this sofa bed back up, you're simply just gonna push it up. If it gets stuck right there a little bit, just pull it up and there you go. Next, we're gonna move on to the dinette, the dream dinette. Uh, we're gonna turn this into a bed. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually pull these cushions up like so, just like that. Next, we're gonna take a look underneath the table. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unlock this guy right here, which is locked in right here by this white clip. We're gonna simply push this bar like this. We're gonna push right directly into the middle and we're gonna push the table down. After we push the table down, we're gonna go ahead and grab the cushions and we're gonna use the cushions to fill in the gaps to turn it in to a bed like so. To break this back up and put it back into our dinette, we're gonna simply push these cushions up. We're gonna pull these ones back up like so, like so. With two hands, we're gonna pull the table up from right here and right here, we're gonna pull it up. Now we're going to lock it back into place. Now, if your table's not going down or up for some reason, something might have fell back here. A lot of things tend to fall back there. Any brushes or any kind of toys or anything like that can fall back there and it won't allow the table to go up or down. So if that does happen, just check back there to make sure something's not stuck. Then we'll pull the seat belts out and we'll put the seat cushions back down. Now, if you do have a child car seat, this is the anchor <clears throat> on the dinette, which you can strap them in using this seat belt. Now, if the, if the car seat is too bulky and too big, it may not fit in between here. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to put this table down like so, move the cushions, put it back down, then put the car seat in place. That's gonna allow the car seat to fit storage cabinets. Also with our um, HDMI splitter. That HDMI allows you to hook up any other devices to the TV, which we're going to get to in a little bit. This coach does have some lights also above the dinette right here and right here. And what you're going to do is just switch simply just like the other, other ones, push it up like that. This window does have some blinds also. Gently pull them down. We'll close this up for now, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's talk about underneath the dinette. Now, if you are dry camping, this coach actually has solar. If you were dry camping or something and you heard a beeping noise, this is gonna be, it might come from this module right there. That is the carbon monoxide propane detector. If you do hear that beeping off, it is an alarm to tell you that there is something wrong to go ahead and shut off your LP tank, which we'll get to in a little bit. Right below the dinette uh, seat, you also have a outlet right here, located underneath the dinette. And then we also have a drawer also on both sides of the dinette. Now, the stove has a glass top on it. Always remember to lift the glass top. It is not a glass stove top, so you have to have it up. To turn your stove on, there is an arrow right here. 
off right here, what you're going to simply do is you're going to turn the flame to the arrow and follow the arrows on the igniter to turn the flames on. Let's do all three of them real quick. There you go. Now, once you turn this stove off, always remember to let it cool down before you put the glass down. It can still shatter the glass. Oven. Let's talk about the oven. The oven is not very big, but you can make some cookies or some bread or something. You're simply going to go to the oven dial, where it's over here on the right hand side. We're going to turn it to the flame. What we're going to do is we're going to push this in. We're going to actually close this a little bit. We're going to let a little bit of propane build up in there. And then we're going to use the igniter while looking under the oven to see if the pilot lights. So that's how long it took me to light it. So that's the pilot. That's what it looks like. Once the pilot is lit, you can go ahead and turn it to your desired temperature of what you're needed on. And it lights up just like that. Always remember to turn your oven off when not in use. Do not use the stove as a heating element to heat the coach. It is dangerous. Also on the stove, you're going to have a little button right here. These are just to light up the knobs. Right below the oven, you have some more drawer storage space. On the top of it, we have a light for the stove and a fan exhaust for when you are cooking. Seems like it's cooled down. I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Right above the stove, we have the microwave. Okay, the microwave will only work if you are plugged in or if your generator is on. The TV, the air conditioner, the microwave, and any outlets will not work unless you're hooked up to shore power or you have the generator on. I'm going to show everybody how to do the generator in just a little bit, okay? So TV, air conditioner, microwave will not work unless you're plugged in or generators on. Next to the stove, we have the sink. Now, if you're hooked up to city water, you can automatically turn your water on and you'll have a water supply. If you're not hooked up to city water, you're going to have to turn the water pump on and that water pump is going to pump the water out of your fresh water tank if you filled it up. Let's take a look at the control panel real quick and we're gonna show you where that water pump switch is at. The water pump switch is located right here labeled water pump. You would simply turn that on if you're on the road or you need to pull over to use the toilet, anything with water, the sink, you wanna take a shower to freshen up, you're at a rest stop, you have to turn the water pump on to get your water supply. Always remember when the water pump is not in use, go ahead and shut it off. Right above the sink, we have three switches. Let's turn them on. One is for that light. Another one is for another light, which is gonna be located right here. And then the third one will be another fan switch, which is gonna be above the stove, okay? To open up this vent, you simply just turn the black knob like so. And what that's gonna do, is gonna help get all that air if you're cooking, get all the smoke and stuff out of here. Remember to close this when you start transporting. And to turn the fan off, you can hit that switch right there. There is another switch on the fan that we like to leave on and just control it from this switch. It's a two-way switch, so if the fan doesn't go on with this switch, always check the switch above by the fan. Underneath the sink, we have some more storage space for a garbage can. Right over here, we have some extended countertop. We're just going to lift this guy up just like that, and you get a little bit more counter space. To break this guy down, Take a look under here. We're going to simply lift up just a little bit, two hands, put the bars down like so, and it folds down. Right below that, we have a couple of drawers right here for any kitchen utensils that you may have. Next, we're going to move on over here to another cabinet storage, the right above the door. Move over to the fridge, more storage up here. Let's talk about this fridge. We're going to open up the freezer door first and we're going to have some controls over here now when you pick up your coach this is automatically it's already going to be on we're going to turn that fridge on we're going to leave it on auto now what auto means is if you're plugged into shore power and you unplug 
the fridge is automatically going to switch over to the 12 volt system and propane so to ensure that the fridge and freezer stay cold while you are driving if you turn this button off the fridge and freezer will start going warm so let's leave it on you do have a gas only option uh, if you wanted to just put it on gas if you're going to be dry camping uh, or anything else or not hooked up you can leave it on gas it's the same thing as leaving it on, on auto auto is going to just do it preferably just don't touch any of that if the lights on you're good to go let's open up the fridge over here now these are the cooling fins for the fridge if you have too much food right here it is blocking the circulation of the cold air trying to circulate through so try not to block these fins too much or with big objects now this wire right here goes in between the fins if that wire is off like that the fridge will not get cold it needs to be in this clip and in between the fins like so primarily at one of these ends right here it could be in any one of these right here okay so sometimes this wire gets bumped off from putting stuff into the fridge just remember hey if that wire falls off i got to put it back on there we're going to turn on this switch right here this is the light switch for the interior this is another light switch right here which is going to be for underneath the steps for at night now let's come into the bedroom we're going to go over some stuff right here now one step that we did skip after we opened up the slide is we forgot to pull the mattress down this mattress simply just flips up and down when you are closing the slide we'll go through that right now we're going to flip this guy back up in the bedroom below the bed is your breaker and fuse box to open up this breaker and fuse box you're going to simply push that door open like that and it's going to be labeled where all the fuses and everything and what they're for also some breakers right here now what are these breakers and fuses for now some of these breakers can pop if you have too much power or something goes wrong it will light up red right here and it'll tell you which fuse is out another breaker can pop just like your house you just simply come and check these and push it back on let's move over here to the bedroom right here we have a pantry for any spices more storage space right here right before the bathroom we have some more storage space right here plenty of storage and we have more storage space right here now in the bedroom over here on the wall right behind the curtain we're gonna have a light switch there's your light switch for your bedroom now let's talk about this control panel right here. This control panel is for your air conditioner and for your furnace. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do to put the furnace on is you're gonna put it on heat high and turn it all the way on and you're gonna hear the fan start blowing and you're gonna hear a blower blowing from the outside. That's the furnace going, okay? This is how you adjust the temperature of the furnace just like your house. You could put it on auto high, auto low, or high on and high low, or on low. Your, your air conditioner, we're not plugged in right now. You would need to be plugged in or your generator needs to be on for your generator, I mean, for your AC to work. You simply put it on cool and you adjust the temperature like so. Make sure you always turn these components off when you're not using them. Let's move on over here to some more closet space over here in the bedroom. Plenty of closet space, space in here. One drawer right there, one door right here. Drawer, drawer, and another drawer. Next to the bed, you have some outlets and you do have a 12 volt plug-in for any kind of machine that you may have. Not all coaches can handle the power of any kind of sleeping device. You can try it, but there's no uh, always no guarantee that it can work or pop breakers. You do have some USB ports right here also. Same concept with the window blinds right here. They go up and the windows open. You got a light switch right there. You push that button. Same with that window. Same with that light switch. Switch Some more USB ports. And right above the bed, you got some storage space right here, okay? Now, one thing I wanna point out in the back by the bed the slide out is right here 
before you pull the slide in or out, you should always make sure that this drawer didn't accidentally get left open or if it's open. What's going to happen if this is like this and you start closing the slide, it is going to crush this drawer and damage it. Same as if it was closed. If that's if the slide is closed this way, it's not going to hurt to come back and take a peek to make sure this drawer is closed because it's going to be stuck behind here. The slide is going to be going out and it can crush that door also. So that's just another thing that you might want to take a, uh, keep an eye out for. Okay, let's go to the bathroom. Nice big bathroom in here. We have two switches on the wall. One is going to be for the light switch. The next one is going to be for the fan switch. Same with this fan right here. It has two switches. We're going to leave that switch on and we'll control the fan from right here. Same thing. Just twist this open like so to open up the vent and you can use the fan. Also over here in the bathroom, we're going to have another outlet right here. This outlet is in a GFI protected outlet. Now, a lot of these outlets are controlled by the GFI, so if too much power, if it's going to trip the GFI from any curling iron, blow dryer, stuff like that. That's what trips these. You're going to simply push the button in the middle to reset it. There is a reset button right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and show you how to use the toilet. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the water pump real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the water pump on. Water pump. Any kind of water supply should always be used when you are flushing the toilet. There is a step next to the toilet right here. You're simply going to put your foot on it to flush. Now before you can half step the pedal and what that's going to do is it's going to help it fill up the toilet a little bit with some water just like a regular home toilet. Then you have some water in there. Then you can flush everything down. Make sure that all the paper goes down. Inside the shower, we're going to open this up right here. The shower has a water saver on two ends. So if you turn this water on, let's turn it on real quick. The water's on. The water tank for the hot water is only six gallons. So it's kind of, you're going to want to rinse off, lather up, rinse off so everybody can get a hot shower or you're going to have to wait about another 30 minutes, 20 minutes for the hot water to get hot again. So, so how everybody can get a shower is you turn this on, you can rinse off, hit that button, lather up, rinse off, and you're done. There's also this lever right here also allows you to turn the water on and off without having to adjust the temperatures on these nozzles right here. This is using that water saver is going to help ensure that your gray tanks don't get filled up so fast and that everybody gets a shower. When you are transporting, make sure that this shower door is clipped on and locked right there. Let's move on to the control panel. All right, so here is the control panel for all the stuff I was talking about. So LPG is liquid propane gallons battery, fresh water, black tank, gray tank. Each one of these buttons tells you the level of each tank. For example, if I push this little button right here, the lights light up right here and tells me how much propane is actually in that tank. The propane tank is two thirds full. If I push the battery, this is the, for the house batteries only. I'm going to push that button right there. It's telling me that the house batteries are actually full right now. If your batteries go down to two thirds and you are dry camping, that's when you want to start the generator and start charging the batteries. But we'll go over that right now. Your fresh water tank, it's telling me that it's one third full. So when you're filling up your fresh water tank, your onboard reservoir that the water pump pumps the water from, this is how you tell also tell if it's full when you're filling it up. Push that button, it tells you how much water is in there. This is for your black tank. It's empty and our gray tank is also empty. I usually dump the black tanks and the gray tanks when they're about two thirds or full. I don't really dump them when they're one third or not unless we're storing them. Now, if 
you run out of fresh water and you are dry camping, or also known as boondocking. If you run out of fresh water after it was full, that means that fresh water already drained into your black, into your gray tank, which means these guys are about half full. Now, you cannot really fill up the fresh water if it's already drained a full tank into these two. You won't have enough room for the second fresh tank to drain into. So, if you had a full tank of fresh water, that means it dumped into the black, into the gray, and you want to fill the fresh water back up, make sure you dump your black and your grays first, then fill up your fresh water. This is the slide extend button that we already talked about. Tank heaters, black and gray. This is if you're in a little bit colder weather and your black tanks, it's really cold outside. You can turn your black tank heater on and your gray tank heater. It's got a heating pad under there that's going to keep those tanks warm and from freezing over. Always turn those off when they're not in use. Water pump is right here. This is our water supply for boondocking if we're not hooked up to a sewer uh, water hose. And then here is our water heater LP and our water heater 110. The difference is if you are plugged in at a campsite, you can use your 110 to save your propane. Have that one on, give it about 30 minutes to get hot. That's for your hot water tank. If you are boondocking, you're gonna wanna use your LP gas water heater, which is gonna ignite a flame in the water heater and start heating it up. Also, if you're boondocking and you have to use your LP water heater, Make sure your water pump is on. We want that water cycling through. We don't want this water heater on just getting dry. When you're done, shut them off. All right. All right. To start your generator, what we're going to do is we're going to hold the stop button down. Wait for this red light to go on. Once the red light goes on, that means the generator is primed. You can release the stop button and hold the start button down until the generator fully starts. Now, one of the ways to figure out if the generator is getting power to everything is you're going to listen for the microwave to beep. Once the microwave beeps, then we know that the generator is going to be working for the electrical uh, outlets, the microwave, the TVs, and the air conditioner. So it's going to take a while for the microwave to beep, but it should be beeping in just a few seconds now. There goes the microwave. So it just beeped, and now we can see that the microwave does have lights on it. So now that we know the generator is giving power to the coach. Now, sometimes in some instances, when you have your generator on, when you're boondocking, if you turn the generator on and it's running like it is now, but the microwave never beat at all, that means you might've tripped the breaker that's outside next to the generator in the cover. So let's go take a look at where that is. Okay, so let's talk about that breaker we're talking about. If your generator's running and the microwave never beeped and your outlets are still work, are not working, we're gonna come out to the generator, which is located on the driver's side, just next to the driver door. And it's gonna look like this. It's gonna have this grill right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. Now remember, this is if your generator is running and the microwave never beeped and your outlets aren't working, you probably tripped a breaker that's inside here. And what we're going to do, it says close, open. We're going to turn these tabs open just like so. We're going to lift this green door off like so. And then that breaker is going to be right here. If we can get a close up right here, that little breaker switch right there is tripped. If it's tripped, it's, it's going to be towards the coach, which means this little breaker switch right here should always be towards you. That's the right way right there. Now we can go back and turn the generator on and the microwave should beep and everything should be good to go. Now this could happen during extreme hot heat weather or it can just happen if you had too much uh, appliances hooked up at the same time and we're using them. Remember to always make sure that this green cover goes on nice and tight and then lock it back up. On your 27R Thor motor coach, we're gonna talk about the TVs right now. Let's take a look at the remote controls. We have three remote controls here. This remote control with the colored volume buttons, red and green. This remote control is for the outside TV. These two black remote controls right here are for the inside TVs only. So let's go ahead and turn on the inside TV 
programming these TVs are all going to be the same. So what we're going to do is if we're going to be on over the air, which means just the regular antenna, we're going to search for channels on the regular antenna. Now for the regular antenna to be on, there is a little button right behind this coax cable. It is a, a, a button right here with a little green light. Now if the green light is on, that means you can surf the channels with just the regular antenna. If you are hooking up to park cable at a campsite, you need to turn the green light that's behind this uh, coax cable off. So if you want cable, turn the green light off. If you want regular uh, over the air, turn the green light on. It's just a little button right behind here that you can press. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to program this TV, see if we can pick up stations. Now, over the air programming is not going to get you a lot of stations, especially if you are driving. I get asked a lot, can I uh, drive with the generator on? Yes, you can. However, remember the generator also runs off the same fuel tank as the vehicle, which means if you have the generator running and the vehicle running, your gas mileage can go down a little bit. Okay. So we're going to turn the TV on. There we go. On the remote control, if we are doing regular over the air, we're going to go to input. We're going to click enter. This is just like a home TV. We're going to go to menu. And then we're going to use the arrows to scroll down to channels to over to channels. Next, we're going to use the arrow to go down and auto channel search. We're going to click on that. Now it's going to give you, ask you the option is, are you hooking up to cable or are you going to do the regular antenna? We're going to do the regular antenna. Okay. If you're at the cable at a campground, you're going to use the cable from the wall, not the satellite box. Use the cable from the wall. And that's going to be a direct input for the cable at the campground. I'm going to show you where that's at on the exterior right now. So we're going to search over the air antenna and that's it. It's going to start scanning right here. It's going to show you once it gets down to the end, it'll show you how many channels actually popped up. Once that's done, you can go ahead and exit and start watching TV. Now, if you're hooking up any devices, any uh, DVD players, fire sticks and stuff like that, if you're tech savvy enough, all you got to do is hook up. You can hook up to the HDMI splitter right here, or you can hook up directly into the back. And then you can go to also go to input and the input and search which what uh, HDMI plug you're going to want it on. Now, this is telling me that it already found 13 channels just over the air. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of here just for now. We're going to go. Congratulations. You're done. And there we go. We have TV. All right. We're going to go ahead and just change this channel real quick. To let us know. Yep. There we go. Now, if we're going to use any other devices, we're going to go to input and then we could scroll to HDMI 1, 2, or 3, or AV, or any kind of other ports. And then we're going to go ahead and turn the TV off. And that's how you program the TV. That includes every single TV is the exact same way how to program it on this coach. All right. Now we're going to go, before we go into the exterior, we're going to take a look at the entry right here. You're going to notice there is a fire extinguisher next to the entry door steps. Next, we're going to come over here and take a look at this area right here. Now, we already know that these two buttons right here are for the stabilizing jacks, and we know that these two buttons right here are light switches. Anything that's not labeled or it's just a black switch right here is usually just a fan switch or a light switch. Up here, we have some switches that are labeled. This is a cargo light. Right here, this is also a step light for this guy right here. This is your awning light, which is going to be for the outside. And this is going to be your awning switch. We're going to go ahead and pull the awning out and see what it looks like. Now, remember when you're pushing your awning out that there are no trees near. If the awning hits a tree, it can scrape the fabric and damage it. Also, remember, if it is too windy, do not have your awning out. Or if it's too much of a heavy rain, also it can collapse the awning. All right, so when you pull your awning out, you're going to only pull it out until you see this flap going straight down like this. 
Now, if it is a little bit drizzling and you want to hang out, you can come over here to the awning arms and just pull this down right there and then come back over here to this side. Pull this arm down and that's going to give you a little pitch for the awning so if it is raining, the water can run right off. Now, when you're pulling the awning back in, I like to come back over here and just push these bars up like that. Come back over here and push this bar up like this. Now, as we roll up the awning, we're going to always make sure that this flap rolls in towards you. Let's go ahead and close this up. There we go. Now the flap is coming in towards me. That's the way, the proper way to roll it up. It may take a while to roll up. Just make sure that you roll it all the way until it stops completely. All right, we're gonna talk about the outside of the coach and the storage compartments as well as the keys. Now we have several keys on the keychain. One is the ignition key. This one has a remote control to lock and unlock the front cab doors. And then we have a purple and gray key that look very similar. The purple key is gonna be for the entry door right here. The purple key will work for the deadbolt lock and also work for the top lock. That's the purple key. Remember to always lock your entry door while you are driving and make sure nobody is standing near the door while you are also driving. The gray key is going to be for all your compartment locks. Now make sure you are very gentle with these keys and not break them inside. It's going to turn just like that. If the key is not turning, you're going to want to give the door a little help, push it in and turn the key. Make sure all these compartments are locked during transport so they don't fly open. Here is a storage compartment under here on the passenger side. Each compartment will have a little light switch. You can turn those off and on right there with the, compart with the cargo light. Down here we have the propane. Now the propane is the only compartment that's not going to have a lock on it. In case of an emergency, somebody needs to come over here and turn the tank off. To turn that tank off, you're going to turn it clockwise all the way. To turn it on, it's going to go counterclockwise all the way. Now to fill up your propane, you will need to fill it up at a RV campsite or anywhere that can fill up an RV. You have to be propane certified to fill your tank up. This right here, if you're wondering what this is, this is the furnace exhaust. This gets really hot, make sure nobody touches that. This little compartment right here is for service department to access the refrigerator. We got some 110 power outlets out here. And out here in this compartment, we have the outdoor TV, which we already learned how to program. Now with both hands on each side, you can pull this TV out and you can swivel it whichever way you'd like. This TV also has a Bluetooth speaker where you can just listen to music. Pretty easy to operate. You'll just turn the power on and select the Bluetooth option and connect whatever device that you want to use. Down here, we also have some more storage right here. Now this little clip right here is to hold the door open like so. Now make sure when you close this compartment door that you unclip this. Forcing this door shut can damage this little clip right here. Down over here, we're gonna see a little quick connect for a uh, propane. If you have an external barbecue pit, you can quick connect a propane barbecue pit right there and it feeds off of your propane tank. Right over here, we have a ladder which nobody should climb on the roof at all. Nobody should be on the roof. Let's come on over here to the side. And this is how much the slide pushes out. So if you're wondering how much the slide pushes out, it's about two feet. So give yourself some clearance if you're at your campsite. Make sure you're clear of any trees right here. Make sure when you're backing up at your campsite, you don't rely on the camera by itself. You always have a spotter to help you back up. We've already talked about the city water connection. We've already talked about the fresh water fill and we've already talked about the sandy flush earlier in the video. Unleaded fuel only. This vehicle takes unleaded fuel only not diesel, okay? When you do put unleaded fuel, make sure you tighten this cap 
all the way and then it clicks nice and tight. In here, we have more storage space in here, which we store our hoses, electrical or wherever. Always make sure that you access the storage under here with the slide closed. You can, don't want to hit your head on this, so be very careful with that. Down over here, we have some more storage space right there, little compartment. On the slide out, we have some more storage right here. Same with this clip right here. Underneath the slide, there are some more storage compartments as well as the generator access. Over there, this little guy right here is the hot water heater to access. Now let's talk about this hot water heater real quick. Let's say you turned on your hot water heater and it ne on propane side and it never went on. This little guy right here is a thermo cutoff. This is an emergency cutoff switch. If it gets too hot, this plastic will melt and it acts like a fuse and it will shut off. This could be the issue right here. If that does happen where your water heater doesn't go on, you can simply take this off, disconnect this, plug this back in like so, fire up the hot water heater, and if it kicks on, that means this thermal cutoff is bad. We don't want to be using the hot water heater with this plug directly in. That is a safety concern right there. You'll have to replace this thermal cutoff. And then we're going to put it back on right there. That is just worst case scenarios. That's just a little something that tends to happen sometimes. Out here, right here, we have the outdoor shower, which is just a shower head and some hot water. And this little silver key is going to be used to open that up right there. And that's what that looks like right there. You want to rinse off your feet if you're at the beach or if you have a, a pet that you want to hose off, you can do so right there. So that's the outside compartments of everything. Let's take a, let's break this guy down, which means we're going to push in the slide and put the jacks up. Now, remember when we set up, we put the stabilizing jacks down first, then we pushed out the slide. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to push the slide in and then we're going to put the stabilizing jacks up. So let's go do that. All right, so we're going to close everything up and break it down. Uh, but before we do, let's talk about this fridge handles real quick. These fridge handles, you got to be gentle with these fridge handles. You want to pull from the bottom right here for the freezer and pull from the top right here. So if you, let's see if we can get a close up right there. There is a little clip right here that clips into this little gray thing right there. So tugging on this too hard can damage the handle. So we'll just go like that. We'll open them right up. Now let's close up the slide. Now remember what we want to do is we're going to make sure that this drawer and this cabinet is shut all the way so the slide does not hit it and damage it while we're pulling in the slide. Looks like they're closed. We're going to push the mattress up like there. And then we're going to make sure that the front driver's seat is clear right here so the slide doesn't touch it. Let's go ahead and turn the vehicle on to pull the slide in. All right, let's go back to the control panel. And we're gonna hit that retract button. Give it a couple seconds. Remember, nobody should be sitting on the slide while you're pushing it in or out. We're going to hold the retract button down until the slide stops by itself. And then we're going to retract the stabilizing jacks. All right, now that we close the slide, we're going to put the two stabilizing jacks up and the beeping noise should go off once they're all the way up. But just because the beeping goes off, we're always going to go into the rear and double check to make sure those stabilizers went up. All we're going to do is hit these two buttons and push the stabilizing jacks up. All right, now that we put the stabilizer jacks up, we came to the rear to make sure that they are fully up and it looks like they are. Always remember to disconnect your power cord, your water hose and your sewer hose 
and make sure that your valves are completely closed before you depart. Let's go into the front cab and we're going to go over all some functions that are in there. Let's go. Now, if you're in the driver's seat, you're going to notice next to the door and between the steering wheel, we have a vent right here. And this is where your lights are. Right now, the lights are off. This is the parking lights. These are the lights and these are the auto lights. I like to always leave them on the regular lights. These two little buttons right here are to adjust the dimming for the dashboard. And then you're going to see an emergency start button right here. This emergency start button is just in case your chassis battery, which is your motor, in case that battery goes dead for some reason, you're going to want to hold this button up and turn the ignition key at the same time, and it's going to jump you from the house battery. So basically, it's giving you a jump without the jumper cables. To release the brake, the brake pedal's right here. Right above there is going to be the brake release. And this is the access to the hood, which you shouldn't have to open. Let's talk about the other components. All right, we are in the driver's seat of the front cab. To my left right here, we have a button. It's the uh, mirror heaters for the side mirrors to heat up the frost. And then we got the power mirror controls right here that will adjust the driver's side wind mirror and the passenger side mirror. This is your blind spotter mirror. This you have to move manually with your hand. It does not control right here. Only this mirror controls. Uh, next on the driver door, we have, the, of course, the uh, lock and unlock, and we have the two window buttons. On the steering wheel, we have some control buttons right here for the settings on the dashboard. We also have cruise control right here, and then we have some buttons right here to control the radio. And it also has a quick camera button right there. Now, what that quick camera button does is, let's say you're driving forward. Your rear view mirror is right here. You're in an RV. You can't see behind you. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the back camera on so you can see behind you while you're driving forward, which this now becomes your rear view mirror. Now, do not trust this camera at all. Always use your mirrors, of course. And if you're backing up, always use a spotter. That's what that looks like. So you can use the camera. Now we're going to scroll through. You'll notice that now this is the driver's side camera. Each blinker has its own camera on the mirror, but you could also scroll through the cameras with the control on the steering wheel. Now let's go back over here. We'll go to source and talk about this radio right here. We've got some basic functions. It is Bluetooth. Not all phones are compatible. We got two volume buttons right here, a power button with a mute, and then your source button and a voice button if you are connected to your Bluetooth. And if you are connected to your Bluetooth, right below here, you will see a little microphone. That's going to be your microphone when you're talking on your phone. To go through the other functions of the radio, see this little home house right here, the home button? Press that button right there. And that's going to take you to all your different options. you got a USB port that you could plug into some devices. Not all devices are compatible. Sirius XM radio. Not all six Sirius XM radios are functioning. Uh, Android Auto, CarPlay, and your Bluetooth. We're going to go back over here real quick. And let's see. We can scroll through right here. we got some Bluetooth audio. A camera button that will also allow us to go back to the rear camera. Let's go back to the home button. We got an AV in, a zone one and zone two speakers, and then some settings right there. Over here, we have your climate controls, just a normal vent, AC, cool, warm, high, low. You have your hazard lights that are right here, and you also have a USB port that's right here. And this is your traction control system. What that traction control system does is if it's on, which this is the off button, it should be on, when you go into windy conditions, the automatic tracking uh, system will activate and it will help you from preventing to swerve so much in windy conditions. And then you got a 12 volt plug right here. I think that concludes the front cab. All right, everybody, thank you for watching our 2023 Thor Motor Coach 27R video. Remember, I'm Dave from Family RV. We're located down in Morgan Hill, California at 19380 Monterey Road. For all your rental, sales, and service needs, contact us. Have a safe and fun trip.